Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make amazing bass lines using just root notes, just chord tones, just scale tones, and then a mixture. If you don't know what any of that means, don't worry, I'll get into all of it. Later on in the lesson, I'm going to show you exactly what makes a great bass line, so stick around for that. Let's start off with just simple root notes. I'll explain the chord progression later. You can get the PDF and the backing track for free. Follow the link below. Let's have a go. Okay, I've got quite a syncopated rhythm there. That just means uh, rhythms that just aren't always on the beat. It provides a bit of rhythmic excitement. If you look at the chord symbols above, we've got F to D minor to B flat to C. This is a one, six, four, five chord progression in the key of F major. That will become important later on, but for now we don't need to worry about it. A root note is simply the lowest note of a chord, so that's all we're doing here. The F, the D, the B flat and the C. And you really can get a lot of mileage just from playing a root note. So three, four. Yeah, add some ghost notes in. That is just an octave. And that's on any note, you can just go two frets higher, two strings down, and you get the next occurrence of that note higher up. Fs, Ds, B flats. Let's go to the next idea now. And that is using chord tones. So those chord symbols represent the chords. Now here I've got F major seven. I've just put a seventh chord in just to give us a little bit more information. So F major seven is this. D minor seven. B flat major seven. And then C seven or C dominant seven. And I've written a bass line using some of those notes. We have a little bit more harmonic interest there because a root note is a root note. It doesn't really define the quality of a chord. That's if it, is it major, is it minor, is it dominant? But when you start to add in some of those, especially a third, it's a major third, D minor, you're starting to define the harmony a little bit more. So as a bass player, you really have influence over rhythm. We saw that in the root note example. Just one note, rhythm sounds great. Here, we're influencing a little bit more of, of the harmony and strengthening that. This isn't good or bad, you know, to use roots is good or bad or to use this. It's just options, it's just choices. Let's look at the next choice. So this time we're going to use no notes from the scale or mode. Here's where things get a little scary, but it's not really that scary, to be honest. We've, we're in the key of F. That means we're in the key of F major. That in itself is a mode, it's called the Ionian mode. And they have these strange ancient Greek names. It doesn't really matter if you know them or not, but it is what it is, okay? So you've got a F major scale over the F major seven. And over the D, another funny name, D Aeolian, but you might know that as the D natural minor scale. These all fit, and then you have a B flat Lydian over the four chord, F, G, A, B flat is the four chord. It's got a sharp fourth in it, and then C7 is C mixolydian. Like I said, absolutely doesn't matter if you know what those are. All a mode is, is the key of F starting on whatever the root is. So C, look. F is just all natural notes, you know, just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, with a flat, B flat. So from C, it would be C, D, with going up the alphabet. C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. You have to stick in whatever the key tells you to. So you could just think F major starting from C, no problem. I'm going to play each mode over each chord. Thank you. 
find that when you add notes from the key or you, the modes, whatever way you're thinking about this, I think it just adds quite a lot of melody into things. I like to do that a lot. Let's quickly talk about fills. Now we're in the key of F major, we talked about that. So a good trick is to use the pentatonic of the key. So F major scale gives us F major pentatonic. <laughs> And that was just a fill using F major pentatonic. It's, it just works every single time. But then you can use the notes from the F major scale as well, and it helps to know those in different places. Or, and or notes from those modes that I showed you. There are so many things you can do. I'm gonna play along, and then if I find something that I like, I'll stop and tell you what it is. Okay, at the end there I was on the C7. Now, the end of four bars, the end of a phrase tends to be a good place to put in a bass fill. And I just ran down a C mixolydian, that's the, that's the F major scale starting on the C. Pentatonic. Pentatonic. Now, what makes a great bass line? It can be slightly intangible, but you absolutely can't have a good bass line without a really interesting rhythm played well. That's what a groove is, okay? At the beginning, we had a rhythm just on a root note and it sounded good. It sounded good because the rhythm got us moving. The way it's played, how you, how, you know, the feel you put into it, perhaps some of the techniques like ghost notes, that will help. Note choice is incredibly important. So do you stick with roots? Do you a bit of, you know, do you put in a bit of chord tones, a bit of scale tones? Now what happens is that you practice these ideas and then that's the end of how you, th how thinking about this, okay? You think about it initially and then you practice so much that it, the music just flows out of you. And I know that sounds funny, but it will happen the more you practice, the more you have these elements under your fingers, the more it will come out and you won't think about things. You'll just be really hearing something and playing that. It will happen with practice. Another thing that makes a brilliant bass line is locking with the kick drum. Listen to this kick drum, I'll play something along to it. don't have to stick to what it does, you can play around it. But if you lock in with the drums, it's much better with a real drummer, by the way. If you lock in with the drums, especially the kick drum, that's gonna make everything gel. The rhythm section is gonna be tight. Everything sounds good from that point. Now, ideally, you want to do a blend of these things without thinking about it. I'll demo that. You definitely fall back on things. I do that all the time over a major chord. Over the one or the five chord that will work. So you will find licks and riffs that work if you transcribe bass lines by ear and, and figure out what's going on. Now here's another video that you can watch that are going to reinforce a few more of these ideas. Another backing track with that one. You're going to enjoy that. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.